don't know what you're talking about. I am a professional. Look at the background. Yeah. Well, I, good? I blurred the fridge out. <laughs> I feel like I feel like everyone should have this background. I don't know why I'm the only one with this background. I like my background. I mean, you have a good background too. Yeah. I wish I I wish there was a a more fun way to enter into this podcast right now. I don't know, know. but I'm doing this the first time without headphones. It feels weird. You're also doing it the first time with a beanie. (laughs) I'm at the gym. I didn't. I thought I was gonna be home tonight. I fucked up. So I'm at the gym. That's why we're just doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of the Gene Team GPT podcast, where only half of us are at the gym. (laughs) I am your host, Syed Ader. This is always with my friends. I'm. I'm being professional here i'm like introducing the podcast i'm getting snide comments from the peanut gallery peanut gallery meaning ryan and brian who are also good friends of mine because that's how we start the podcast yes special guest today one of the trainers at the gym leah leah how are you tell us what's going on what's going on oh, i'm good how are you well oh, just hanging out uh <laughs> we decided you know let's just you know, as as the youth say, shoot the shit and talk and hang out. You know, the youth definitely say that. Just yeah. talk like idiots amongst ourselves. Don't overthink it. Just this talk. Is, I'm, I'm aware. I've listened to multiple podcasts. I know how it We works. just sound like morons for like forty minutes. Welcome to the Moron Podcast. I am your extra <laughs> special host. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, um, we were very interested in having you on you are uh i say a really integral part of the gpt community at the moment you got meets coming up you got competitions coming up and we wanted to talk to you about that what's going on in your life yeah so i have you know state camps meet coming up march um qualifier total for that and then i was lucky enough to qualify also for rising tides so i will be doing that i will not be doing good nationals or raw nationals this year um, but yeah, so those are the two I have coming up. Any particular reason why we're not doing those? I'm also trying to work in the background. It's weird, but we'll keep going. <laughs> um, so state, uh, Connecticut state championships is year. I put a DOS qualifier on, um, to try to make it a more competitive meet last year. We had like 17 people that it was their first meet. So we don't want to do that this year. So this, we put a DOS qualifier in that was pretty high, um, so a lot of people were not super pumped with me that they didn't get in. Um, and next year I'm going to make it even higher. So, <laughs> um, so the cool thing, one of the things, one of the reasons we have Leon is that the cool thing with states this year is we've got two classes that are going to be super competitive, the hundred kilo men, which we're just going to talk about later because there's like 12 of them, but the 60 kilo women. Um, so Leah's class is right now, Gonna be a little mean to the people that aren't in the top three, but it's fine. Uh, the top three um, are within like it's like eighteen dots points and like ten kilos of each other. So you've got uh, Sam, Kelly, and Leah that are all gonna be going for first place. Um, so that's kind of cool because like usually at a lot of these meets we don't have a big competition. Um, so I've talked to Leah and Kelly a lot. I haven't talked to Sam much, but. Um, the three of them are all going to squat in that same ballpark. Uh, Leah's going to outbench them by a lot, and then they're going to outpull Leah by a lot. So it's going to come down to the end to see who can win. Um, so I don't know. What, more, what do you think on your training right now for states? It's weird since I write yeah, all your training. And your next, um, I know, so you kind of know. Um, I think I've been putting a lot more focus and effort into how I train, the intensity of training. And then, uh, you know, my nutrition has been better uh, recently because I have these meets coming up um, that I want to perform well at. Um, So yeah, I definitely have put a lot more energy and effort into training, making sure I get all my days in throughout the week and um, doing my program to do its fullest, not skipping, <laughs> doing my cardio, all that good stuff. So I've been really, really focusing on uh, 
things of that sort for the upcoming meets. Um, so I, I am a full-time personal trainer as well. So um, sometimes it gets a little rough, uh, but I definitely have been trying to make an effort to get as, you know, schedule my times as best as I can get full day training done. Because uh, it takes me about a long day, two and a half to three hours. And you're training just raw now, right? You're not doing any equipment. It's I am up. just training raw. I have not been in the suit since, uh, or in any years since last. Uh, last year's match. Yeah. Are you happy about that, or or what's what's changing? Yeah. Is there is it? This, it sounds like the same amount of time. That sounds like yeah, I, three hours. <laughs> I really enjoy, you know, can do in the you know in the suits and in the in the shirt. I really like it. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as training in it goes, right, like right now, it's not necessary to be training in it. Um, I, I enjoy it. I do. I really love foot pads. I had the best time. Um, but yeah, it's not for my now, it's not really something I'm going to be getting into. Uh, maybe later on in the year, I'll do it if I decide. Because I'm not, again, I'm not going to have So I'll be done with these two meets by June. June 9th is the Rising Tides meet. So. I'll be done after that and I'll take a take a break and then decide what I want to do from there. Um. So, uh, Ryan, what is uh, obviously other than being an equipment, what is the major change in in programming coming out of that? I mean, what's the what's the change from peaking and preparing for these meets? Oh, I mean, I I'll pull back a little bit. I guess like um, the the major change to our program right now because like we last year we did both raw and equipped nets. Uh, equipped was in July last year and equipped and raw was in September. So like I told her ahead of time that that might not be the smartest move, but we were, um, I figured she could do both and there was not a lot of people that were going to do both. Um, so we did both and that was, that was aggressive. Um, and now, um, so she planned doing raw, raw, uh, for States. Um, I think we were, I think the original plan was to do equipped Nats, we but like, when the the when the invite for rising tides came out, we had a long talk um, and kind of changed plans. Um, so we'll pull back a little bit more. Uh, the biggest change right now for for states is that we're now training both deadlifts, sumo and conventional, as the main lift. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been doing sumo as the main lift for the last few years, and right now we're treating them both like a main lift. And uh, we'll kind of see which one turns out better as we get closer. Um, but I don't know. What do you what do you think with the, the deadlift stuff? It's weird because I'm trying to look at the camera, but she's right next to me. <laughs> Just look at her on the camera. Like, I'm trying to like ignore her. <laughs> the deadlift has been interesting. Uh, I haven't seen a ton of weight from my conventional, and then all of a sudden, with doing both of them. It has shot up exponentially. It's it's come up a lot. Um, it wasn't close to my sumo before, and now I think if my I have a chance of possibly pulling a more convention, then I do sumo. And I've been doing sumo for the past, so it's interesting. I didn't think that would happen. I didn't think I would get comfortable with conventional like I did. I mm -hmm. always thought that I would pull sumo. As of late, um, sumo has not been as strong as it has been my convention. And I feel more comfortable. So it's interesting. It's it's definitely interesting to have to come in and on my day one deadlift sumo really heavy and then do the same thing two days later for conventional. Um, you would think that like my conventional would maybe uh, not do as well because it's after the sumo, uh, but it does better. <laughs> it's really interesting. Are you training both with the... Uh... Is, are they both heavy? Are they both um, progressing the same way? Is there heavy days? So, is there like right now? If you think of like our normal wave, which I know you guys understand, but maybe <laughs> and Andre understand for the world um, of like heavy sub max and then rep work. Uh, normally, for you know, for we only treat that for the main lift, and then the supplemental lift. So like if her main lift was sumo, then for supplemental it might be conventional. But it's more of just like a linear kind of style, three by five, three by three, three by one, something like that. Uh, I'm treating both with the same wave. So in week one, 
both are heavy. In week two, both are submax. In week three, both are volume. Um, so I um, I beat up Leah more than most of everybody else. Um, like I said, last year she did the two she did the two nationals within three months. So training in gear, trained enough in raw to not be fully away from that. Then did the gear, then got did equip nationals, and then got out of the gear immediately after equip nationals, and then tried to ramp it right back up for raw nationals. Um, and then I mean, like for equip, she came third in the country, and raw was twentieth, something like yeah, around top twenty. Um, so and PR'd in both meets, so like things went well, but it's a lot. And then, so like I said this year, the big change this year, if you ignore the equip side of things, is that we're just that we're adding in conventional a lot more. Uh, so that's for states. Uh, that'll be fun because we want to see, we're going to see what ends up coming out better, some are, are um, conventional. And like I said, like going in into squats, the three of them are all going to squat around the same number, probably. Going into bench, she's going to bench the other two by a decent amount, but they out pull her. So the interesting thing will be like where conventional kind of pulls in. So like if if conventional ends up being a big jump, then she might be a lot closer than everyone thinks right now. Um, so that will be kind of interesting. Um, and then like I said, then we had a big talk because um, Equip Nationals is only like a month after Rising Tides. Uh, Equip Equip Nats is fun because. The, uh, the environment's very different than raw nats because everyone's kind of on the same page where raw nats, there's a lot more. They, well, just like everyone's kind of doing their own thing where equipped everyone's like really on the same page. Um, so we've talked about when the Rising Tides invite came out. So two people at the gym got that. So Leah got it, Stephanie got it. I talked to both of them individually. Uh, they both decided to do it. They thought it was kind of a good uh, thing for their career. Uh, more so than Stephanie doing raw nats and Leah doing equip nats. And then at least on the raw side of things, it worked out because uh, it sold out in four seconds. So neither of them got in anyway. Um, but I told Leah that like equip nats is pretty much out of the, out of the picture if we're doing uh, rise of tides because equipped is about a month later. And we really can't do the equip training leading into rising tides and have rising tides go as well as it should. And we don't have time to be able to get into the gear and train for one month after that. So we decided not to do that one this year. Yeah. Um, so we talked about states. Rise of Tides is the next big one. So like I said, Rise of Tides is like, it, it's an invite only meet uh, for New Jersey first and foremost. And then it's for New York, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. So John D'Alessio is running that. Uh, Kevin Pop 110 is um, the the main sponsor for that one. Um, so they're trying to run that like almost like a mini Sheffield over here right now and hopefully to grow it. So again, like the, there was a dots qualifier. Um, it was even higher than state. So it was, it was a hard beat to get into. Um, but we think like, you know, it's going to be better for the two of them for their career. Um, and we talked to a couple other people and they mentioned the same thing, like Leah being like, she's a full-time trainer and coach. Doing equip nats is cool, but like, not sure a ton of people outside of equip nats really care. Where the rising tide should um, be good for uh, social media, be good for uh, getting more people involved. Um, so that'll be the next one. So, hmm. so that one's uh, three months, a little, little less than three months after states. Okay. Uh, so. Again, close, but yeah, not so, as close as I've done in the past. Right. Like, so it's a tough combo. Like, like I said, last year she did equipped and then did raw nats. This year we're going to do raw state uh, states, raw, and then follow it up three, less than three months later and peak again for rising tides. Do uh, you think that's the uh, probably the, it for the year for you? You think those two, or is there another planned, or just see what happens? That I'm going to because last year I did pretty. You know, three meets. And that's been like the pattern for me is three meets in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot, like I would say. I don't know how many more than that. Um, because especially with the two national meets for equipped, I didn't have a lot of time to kind of decide. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe like 10 weeks. Yeah, it wasn't a lot less than normal, a lot less than especially normal. for a new person. Right. 
I was brand new to the equipment last year. So to try to uh, get my soups ready and like prepared for the meat was also kind of uh, a little interesting. I didn't know how my whip was going to go, but I was really excited to do it. Uh, but it, it turned out great. Does that make it more exciting for you? Does the the yeah. the multiple factors you have going on between preparing and then at the meet where there's a lot more that can go on? Yes. Like I I enjoyed equip because I I didn't know what was gonna happen. Like I enjoyed it because I couldn't yes, I didn't you know, I didn't have a we had numbers in mind, but I didn't know what yeah. was gonna happen. I could have not hit depth in the squat suit. And even on my second attempt, we we missed it. We timed out. <laughs> we timed out. So you know, like it's just it's kind of the the gamble that you take yeah. when you go to equip. Like even in my first my first squat, I came out with knee slips. I didn't come out with grass mm. because we didn't know if I was going to hit depth. Um, and I had been hitting it, it's just you know, it's it's yeah, you just want to be safe. Get on the board, not, not bomb out. Uh, yeah. uh, I still don't really know what happened for second attempt. She timed out. Uh, we still went up for a third, and it went fine. Uh, what was your third at equip max? So 155 kilos, 341. She's probably going to squat more than that raw uh, at state this year. Uh, so, you know, that. But then, like, I mean, equip her equip bench. 37 and equip nats like she ain't mentioned that at states or rise of tides that'd be cool but that's not gonna happen um but like uh hopefully she'll be over 200 this year which would put her like the top one and a half or two percent for usapl in that weight class um and i said then we'll see on deadlift um which one's better which one we do so we'll see do you uh, uh do you think you uh learned anything or um benefited did you think your raw training benefited from you doing a cycle and equip did you like learn anything did you change anything or just wait yeah. yeah i think it definitely benefited from being in you i got to learn a bit more about myself as a leader mm. because i'm not a patient person you can ask him um <laughs> he put time limits on my sets because i will just load it squat it like I would just move right into the next one. I've got so many comments about how fast I move. Sets yeah, I come in all the time. You know, like the joke is like powerlifters like just put out a lawn chair and like you know grab a drink or whatever and like sit there. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's not not me. I'm no, like I'm so much more fast paced, so I have to be told to rest. And in the equipment, you can't you can't move fast. Like it doesn't work that way. Right. Uh, you have to take your time getting into it, getting comfortable. It's like, there, like, I do, you know, have anxiety about, you know, I get nervous doing new things. And I took, like, especially the deadlift suit, that's why you didn't see me in it. Uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't learn it. I couldn't be patient enough to, like, sink into it. Or, like, she didn't have the right size either. So, it, like, that was, it was just, that was part of the problem. It's like, because she was using used gear and trying to get into it very quickly. The deadlift suit we had was going to be way too tight, so it was just we just scrapped it, and just went raw, which was fine. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about the equipped is like if I have to wrap her, I just don't wrap her until I want to, and then she's going to wait longer. Um, so instead of having two minute breaks, she automatically has longer breaks because I'm just like not going to wrap you. Um, so like, yeah, like you know, trying to get used to like more meat style where you know you might have somewhere between seven and ten minutes in between sets. I learned mm -hmm. patience. Like a lot of lifters will just naturally do, we'll take a 10 minute break yeah. in between mm -hmm. sets. She'll take two. Um, if that, that's, that's uh, generous. Two minutes is <laughs> Which is, I mean, it's probably fine in training, but it, it makes it a little bit weird because since you're not get, getting as much rest, you're automatically having more fatigue. So your top sets might be a little affected. Um, the way we program, it depends. On like a submax day, that's probably actually really good. Um, keeping the rest really quick and just ripping through the sets is fine on a volume day in the middle. Um, it makes that top set a little bit harder, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. As long as you get there uh, on the heavy days, it does kind of negatively affect it because I'd, I'd want more rest and be able to build up that top set more than the fatigue. And then again, that's going to be more like beat days. Yeah. So that's been a little bit of a, of a change. Uh, is there any time in, sorry for cutting you off, but like, 
I guess anytime, especially with Leah being someone who trains quickly, who wants to do things quickly, we have to put a timer on it in the sense that have you seen tra- uh, athletes that don't train the speed fast enough or they train too much where and meet day they cool off right before their next attempt or people who don't train enough and they're running through attempts so quickly that they can't keep up and like how would you address that there's a few people in the gym training right now that are very slow between attempts and they probably know who i'm talking about when they hear this um it's i think it's pretty rare on meet day i think you're just so amped up um mentally that like it's not i'm not as worried about how long you take in between sets in training for that um i think the problem there is like that you if you take too long in between sets the fatigue isn't there that normally would be there in between so you feel stronger than maybe you should um and that might negatively affect on meet day because like you're you don't have that same kind of rest and then it changed that uh where like i said she's the opposite like she goes so fast that on meet day because it's such a long time i don't think she's gonna get cold because again like you're so amped up like but it's more of like we almost don't know what she's capable of because if we haven't had that nearly complete or complete rest of seven eight ten minutes you know like that you get a meet day that you don't know um so that's kind of we we kind of try to make sure that happens a little bit more um but yeah i don't like i'm not worried about like getting cold um or anything like that, or it's never happened, even on the meet day that we've had in here. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, like I don't think that's that big of an issue. Yeah, I mean, you do a, like you, I put a sweatshirt on my arms before, like before a bench or something like that. Yeah, it, it hasn't been to the point of where I'm like, I can't lift because now I'm not working. That has not happened. Yeah, like I don't like I said, I don't think that's a problem so much. It's more just like having an idea of like what you're capable of because you're getting enough rest. Or like you said, someone who takes too long of like, what are you actually capable of when you don't have 20 minute rest periods? Um, Cause on a meet, if you, there's no way you should have a 20 minute rest even between attempts. Like I said, like the most of our meets you're looking at seven to nine minutes if it's a full flight. So I like to try to see lifting done a little bit quicker than that. So if we're, look, if we're looking at eight minute in, on meet day, if you can take your attempts on five to six minutes in training, so that way you're on meet day, you've got a little bit extra, so it's almost you almost feel better. Um, but I don't want to see more than that. But like I said, if you see, if you do more than that, I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, it just changes like the training a little bit. Like you probably have a little bit inflated numbers in training because of that extra rest. But it's like, I did. well, I think what it did for me for meets is like the fast, like me going faster than gym. I think what it did was helped me slightly sometimes in meets when things go much faster than intended, I'm prepared. I'm one of those people who can do it. Whereas like if someone's not as prepared for, you know, less time in between their attempts, they may not be as prepared as someone that they can, like I can handle it. Um, even if it was a longer week, I am impatient, but it doesn't mean I can't handle it. Um, and equipped, I think training faster did really help me because I was prepared, like I was ready to go out uh, I was ready to get my knees wrapped. I knew what was going to happen. I think it became so fast. It was much like I had to be wrapped. Like I would, I think I would wait like minutes, and then you come back over. It was something like that. It was, it was fast. Um, so I think it helped me there. But is it going to help you? Like if you have to wait longer, sometimes maybe not so much. But I've never felt that it's affected me super negatively. Um, but I've been trying to pay more attention to it now that I'm doing two raw meets and not. It's weird because like, again, I'm working right now, so I keep looking out the window to see if I need to help anybody. It's also because like we're in the same room, so I'm leaning to the side and I keep doing weird shit with my hands, and it's like not showing up. And I'm like, what am I doing? Um, yeah, the things that I notice when I'm not by myself. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, if you want to take a moment and like corrals the gym and make sure everyone's okay, I have a question no, for Brian and Leah. Well, I'm working, like, we're okay. I told people. I mean, there's a couple new well, people, and so I told everyone, but we're fine. Um, for Brian and Leah, both of you are in a interesting position in the sense that both of you are trainers, but you also get your programming from Ryan. So my question is, is are there times that, you know, how important is it to have someone else sort of take your training on for you or that you're programming on for you versus trying to do it yourself? And are there times where you're just like, 
I'm a, I'm a program myself. Ryan can kiss my butt. That's exactly what I've said. Exactly. <laughs> I have not said that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said those words. I've, yeah, I've never said that. Well, I think, I mean, that might be it, like, like you said, because I coach well, it's a little bit easier. Um, Leah's been training with me for most of her powerlifting time. Uh, you, know, you did one bench only meet here that, oh, that, you, that you bombed out of before I was coaching you. That's true. Don't take credit. And then, <laughs> I'll take credit. And then you did a, a non-USAPL meet right after that. Oh, yeah. That's right. um, and then I started coaching after that. So you weren't like, so it's most of her training's been with me. So that's a little bit tough. Um, Brian did have, I mean, I've been coaching Brian for, like, I don't, long enough now that I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you sure. took a little bit of a time and you did your own thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's like not saying it like that side. I think like you, you kind of think of it as like, well, since they both coach people, it, it's almost like more like, do you have that mindset? Like I could do this myself. Yeah. Or is it like, oh shit, I can't do this myself because I know what it entails for other people. And then I'd have to do that for myself too. Does that make more sense as a question? Brian, yeah, no, I get it. I, I, I mean, I get the uh, the same gist of it. I think um, it takes uh, a lot of thought off the table. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about training and programming uh, way too much as it is in my life. So if I don't have to think about that for exactly. a slight while, it's kind of nice. And it's um, it's also good to have someone who could zoom out further than I could. Um, I think that's kind of what we do a lot of the time too. Is just uh if athletes are micromanaging like every day to day um it's it's easy to have a different perspective where someone could just kind of zoom out and be like what are you talking about training is going great um so if anything it's just almost like um i want to say accountability but it, it it gives a uh less for us to think about and a uh much better perspective on ourselves. i train again I'm someone who probably put myself too hard because uh, I am. I tend to be really, really hard on myself. Um, so having someone to slow me down and uh, do the correct things for me is really helpful because I may know what to do for someone else, but for myself, different story. I tend to be decisive when it comes to me, <laughs> not necessarily for anyone else. I've said this before, I think on the podcast, like, when I write a program for someone else, I'm like perfection, like Michelangelo, like this is amazing. I'm so good. Where when I write it for myself, within one exercise, I'm like, this sucks. And I start <laughs> and I start changing. That's why, like, even like when my training was more important to me, and I I would hand it off to friends of mine and just be like, write me a 12 week, write me a 12 week, because if I had something to follow, I would just follow it. Or if I wrote it myself, I'd be like, I could do better. And I would start changing it immediately. And the program would go to shit. Where when I write it for you, I'm like, no, I know this is what you should be doing right now. And like, then we can make tweaks as we need to. But like, I'm, I'm more confident in what's in the moment. Um, and I think most coaches are the same way. It's like, when they're trying to coach themselves, they're like, well, what if I change this? What if I change this? And then it ends up becoming just a mess. Instead of just doing what you should be doing. You're more likely to make changes, so yeah. that one's I mean, it's it's that one's tough for I think anyone that's self coached. Uh, yeah, it's tough. You know, so many exercises. You're like, I want to do all of these, or at least that's me. Like, I want to do every single one of these. And so you start to fall into gaps of like, you're doing what you like or what you or like you stay away from something that's hard because you know how hard it is and you don't want to do it. Um, it's easier for me to be like, do this, and then you're like, fuck. Um, like, like a good example is I like, I, you know, we've talked about on this podcast like 30 times. I've routinely said that I think tempo is fucking stupid. Um, and recently, um, I've been giving everyone tempo, not everyone, that's bullshit. Um, I've been giving more people tempo to try it out um, to the point where I made Leah cry. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> So that's a fun that, that's a fun segment. Welcome segue. to Gleason Performance Training. You need to cry <laughs> at least once. I have not cried. Like I have cried since like freshman year of soccer. Like I have not ever been so upset about a workout. 
I thought that I could do something that I should have. And on the, like, it was a tempo SSB squat and on, I, it was a three by eight. And on, I, I loaded, I think I loaded 155 and thought that that would be a great idea. And as I'm going through it, um, on rep six, my bag totally just tightened and I could not brace. I could not breathe. My heart rate was through the roof. I think it was literally at 200. It was miserable. I have never had to put a bar back in between, like in between. I've never done that. I've never had to put it back because I couldn't handle it. I put it back. I literally couldn't do the last two reps. I've like failed things before. I've done that plenty of times. This, I was like, I just can't do it. And I've never done that. I've failed things before I said, I'm going to put the bar back. I've never it, done it. So, And then I cried. Be to be to be clear too like it's uh i think the thing that's changed is uh it's not a tempo eccentric it's a tempo eccentric and concentric and you gave yeah. a three so it was a three, zero, three one and yeah. it was yeah that's hard yeah. so yeah. for everyone that's looking to think about that like that's a if you think about it three second down three second up no pause in the middle reset at the top seven second rep eight seconds eight reps 56 second set for most people in powerlifting, bitch that anything over five or over three is cardio. I gave an eight rep set of tempo. That set was a minute or you know almost a minute, if yeah. not longer, because of resting. And like the, I'd say one, but I really just mean that as a reset at the top. So that might have been three or four seconds. So like in a perfect world, that would have been a fifty-six second set. Um, it's going to be more like a minute and a half or, or more. Um, so for those that are listening. Uh, be ready for tempo, uh, <laughs> which is also just another podcast I want to talk about because of like why I've been saying yeah. I hate tempo this is stupid for so long, and now what has really changed my mind on it. We'll talk about that in another thing, uh, but it's just like it, you know, it, it's stuff like that that you know it it took me even thinking very differently to to be able to put it on to other people. Where if you've never had it for you, like why would you program it for yourself? But it took me, like he said, I, I kind of restructured the way I think about it. Um, and then I was able to throw throw it into the program where if you were programming for yourself, you'd probably just be like, I'm still just not going to do this. Um, so that one makes it tough. There's a, I mean, I think there's, speaking on that subject too, there's things that I've put in people's programs that like I always, if there's something new and something hard, I'm like, I should try this so that uh, I'm like, uh, yeah. aware of what's going to go on and there's times when I don't I do it later and I realize that I'm an asshole um, so it, it's good to kind of have I think for us to like know some of the things we're doing what we're giving out um, but also it's also good to have someone uh, to like Ryan is saying make us do those things that we wouldn't normally do um, like a new perspective and it gives you like a way to understand when you are programming what mm -hmm. you're supposed to feel how it's going to feel and when you give it to someone else what they can maybe experience or feel um in a way so that you can coach them on it and be better yeah. about it because i know that when it comes to me and doing exercises i have to do the exercise i cannot i i just have trouble trying to understand when i don't do the exercise i have to do it myself first to figure it out and then that's how i coach um yeah. you know, so i can tell someone muscles there so we can feel um, what to squeeze, what not to squeeze, <laughs> you yeah. know, stuff like that. Mm. <laughs> what you should be feeling, what you shouldn't be feeling. Bye. I know I got the I've got the black the background on blur, but it I, I move and sometimes it gets weird. But no one said said a word about my fingers just suddenly coming in and going. Oh, I've done that like I wasn't going to call this some like like thirteen times this episode. <laughs> um, no, I mean like we'll, we can talk about we'll talk about tempo in another podcast of like how I changed my mind on that and hopefully the the couple guys that really got me to change my mind I'm going to try to have them on the podcast uh so Thomas Lilly and John Sheridan both Australia their podcast speak speak is what got me to change it so I'm going to try to invite them on um and which means we're going to be doing a podcast at a very different time because they are 11 hours ahead of us I believe um but um we'll try to go back more on to Leah on that one um I mean, I, I think the, like Sam had mentioned, what he really wanted to hear was, you know, what it was like trying to to 
trained for two different style meets, both equipped and raw within such a small time frame of what it was like trying to train for both of them at the same time, or just like what it was like to have to do that and then be done. And like when you were done with it, like what it was kind of like, uh, and then in different regard, like I know we're far enough away, um, but training for now you're training for two raw meets. So it's more of like, what, what was the big difference of having that equipped meat thrown in there in, you know, how was training different? And I mean, I can talk about that too, um, but how, but, but how, how was the training different? How did it feel different? How did you feel afterwards? Um, and I know like we can re kind of come back to this in a few months, maybe and see how, how would the two raw meats is going to be different after, um, but yeah, what was it like training for equipped and they thought like it was at all that shenanigans? It was. <laughs> it was, it was shenanigans. Like I, again, I didn't know how it was. We didn't even know if I was going to be able to do it because again, we had to find equipment for me in the beginning. Um, but when I once I got to to training in it, um, it was definitely like the hardest training I had done thus far. Like the equipment leading into the equipment because you know I was in the gym for four to five hours, um, and I wasn't used to that. I was used to again two to three hours, but you know like when once you tack on like two three more hours, it's a lot. Um, I had to, you know, bring snacks with me and make sure I was prepared for that type of training because, uh, again, I'm fast. I'm not used to sitting and holding off and waiting. Uh, and I had to because um, I had to get used to the equipment. Um, and it was hard. It wasn't, it's not a walk in the park. Um, the suit, I had to learn that it bites and, um, uh, you know, it's tight. It's not, it's not a loose thing. Like I had to sink into it, all the different things. And then when I got to nationals, we actually, I had a little bit of trouble getting into the squat suit and had to recruit someone because we didn't have like the Smith machine to like hang me on. So like they literally like put me on the Smith machine and kind of leave me there like into the suit. And I didn't have that at nationals. So I had to learn a different way on how to get into it. So it was all really, really cool for me to learn, but it was hard. And then from going from in the suit, I, I didn't recover. It took me like two weeks to like, to feel okay underneath the bar, but I went right back into training after that. Uh, and it was hard. It was, yeah. it was brutal. By the time I got to run out, um, I was tired and I had traveled three times in between. So I, we had gone to Texas, and then I had taken a vacation, but I had trained on that vacation. I went to Aruba, so I was out of the country and found a gym that I was able to train in while preparing for raw nats. Uh, so I had to train on vacation, and then I traveled again to Tennessee to go to raw nats. So it was very short, very quick turnaround for me, and I wish I had a little more time to recover after equip nats because it was so physically demanding um it yeah it was a lot but it was i had never had more fun at a meet in my life than equip now it was it was really enjoyable once i got there because i got to test what i could do because i didn't know what i could do um so i think that was the enjoyable part i mean but it was yeah it was difficult and it was a really fast uh turnaround yeah it was not only a, a change in in jumping on the equipment and training, but you also had three trips and two meets in a very short time. That's a lot. Right. And the deadlift suit didn't work. Like we couldn't, I couldn't, like yeah. we didn't have the right one, but I couldn't even, I couldn't even use it. I didn't try to get into it in training. I didn't try to, you know, even attempt. I, I think I attempted putting it on. And even then I was like, I'm taking this thing. Like there were some things I just, that was one thing I couldn't. Um, hmm. And I think that if I had gotten more used to the equipment, like down the line, maybe I could have, like, if I had more time to prepare, maybe I could have gotten used to it. But again, I don't know. Um, it, like Ryan said, it was a tight, it was tight for, for me to do suit. Also, I had put that other suit on. 
It was a long time. A long yeah, time we, ago. it was not. We didn't. It was do like a lot three weight classes ago that I put that suit on. So try to put that on again. I I started with Brian. I was like, I was really really like I was ninety nine pounds or something like that when I started with Brian. Um, and so now I'm one hundred and thirty because I'm sixty. And, uh, so yeah, things fit differently when you put on thirty pounds. <laughs> Um, if there's anything yeah, we learned so, from equip lifting is that size matters, okay? <laughs> yes. Um I'm I I mean I'm gonna I'll kinda like shoot in like so I think one of the interesting things is like I said, we we I mentioned before that we made the decision that it was probably better for her career to do rising tides and not to do equip nats this year. But I think and I already know this, but like the two of you, I think you can probably hear in her voice um, the kind of the excitement of talking about the equip lifting. Mm -hmm. um, so like what I hope from that is like, like even though we're making this decision that it's better to do the raw stuff because more people are doing that. And, but like for the raw people out there, it might be in interesting to try equip lifting because of that excitement of the, the, different, the difference in what it is. And maybe it's not for you, and maybe um, maybe you love it, but it's something you could try. Um, so hopefully you can do that. But I have a good appreciation and understanding after doing it. You don't, I feel like a lot of people who have only lifted raw have something to say about equipped, but they like whether they, they like it or not, you know, um, someone always has something to say about it, but you have to do it and experience it to truly understand like what it's like. I have such an appreciation for people who equipped lift. It is art. It is not an easy thing. Um, and it's like so rewarding afterwards knowing that you were able to do something like that and at a much heavier weight than what you were doing. It's it's incredible. Um, some of like the weight that it's um, getting to my favorite thing was getting to actually see Tim Donahue do uh, you know, compete in the year because I had seen him once before, but it hadn't been a great meet for him. And I was really excited to see him, you know, his full potential. Um, and like, it was so cool to see those, those numbers and to see what people could actually do uh, in, in the equipment. It was just super cool. And to see what I could do. I mean, benching 237, didn't think that was going to happen in a competition, in the shirt. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but it was really exciting to, and like I said before, to, to go through that experience. It gave me a whole new understanding of what these lifters have to do to get prepared for a meet. Because um, raw is totally different. It's not the same. And you can't speak on equipped if you haven't done it. It's, it's, it's an experience. I'm sure it made it easier, too, that in the span of a few years, a lot of the people at the gym... Uh, a lot of you guys got in around the same time, so it wasn't like completely uncharted territory for you guys. You guys were able to train together and go to equip nats together and do meets together. Yeah. So it, it sure made it a lot easier. It's easier when you have a career with that. Oh yeah, like Tim and Kate were super supportive, really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they were awesome. And obviously Ryan being there for me to help me get into the suit, wrap my knees, do everything. Like it takes an army to equip yeah. That's also the other part of it. And I think I like that one too. The mm -hmm. community principles. Like when I went to nationals, like everybody was helping everybody. Uh, there wasn't one person that was on their own. Like everybody was helping everybody get into the suit or, you know, whatever it may be. Like there, there was just so much of a community that I really, uh, yeah, I really do any of uh i know ryan does but leah bright do you guys have any athletes that are like itching to try to equip lifting and that like have you thought about like oh if i was to ever get an athlete like that how would i program for them uh itching is probably not the right word um <laughs> i think some people are interested in trying it uh but it's it's not it, it's still I like equipped. I like the the difference of it because it's um, things can go so wrong. Um, but when things go right, it's like such a bigger um, improvement, bigger change in what you're doing. Um, where with raw, uh, you kind of know what you're gonna get to meet. Um, 
like the kind of the joke I make is like, you know, if if, if Bob Matthew signs up for me or Ashton signs up for me, you pretty much know that they're, they're going to be up at the top. Um, but in equipped, like using Tim as the example is, you know, Tim had been training in it for a while and his last equipped meet, he had bombed out. So when he had signed up for equipped Nats, uh, his, I think his qualifying total was actually his raw numbers because that was what he needed to use to as, as a qualifier. Um, and then Tim was able to come in and come in second in the country equipped. Uh, I think that was a lot, a lot of surprising. I mean, and then Kalia, we had to use her raw numbers because she didn't have equipped numbers. Uh, so equipped is like, I make the joke that equipped is like uh, playing chess and raw is like playing checkers. It's a little bit different there. Um, and equipped kind of levels the playing field because you don't know what's going to happen. Like someone could bomb out in equipped, which is what happened for Tim and really helps move you forward. Uh, where in raw, that's so much less likely to happen. Um, but just like, you know, the, I think the overload of the equipped makes you understand that like the, the raw training is it's, it's easier, but it's just as important to like pay attention to it. Um, and that you'll have that carryover like to both, like being strong raw is going to make you stronger equipped. Being strong equipped is going to help you understand that like treating raw a little bit with a little bit more care is going to help. Um, so I think that was good for to for her to do both. Um, but it's tough. It's not like it's not something that you can do easily. And like I said, this year because of the way the way the timing broke down, it just didn't really work out. Um, you know, we'll see next year. Um, but I know, like Kevin has said, like rising tides, the plan is to have it again next year. Um, and having, like, there's so many big meets that are on top of each other in USAPL right now that it's it's kind of tough to do a lot of these. Um, and equipped just takes a lot more, you know, um, and it just beats you up a little bit more. So, like like she said, like getting, after doing equipped Nats, like getting back into it for Raw Nats was, was harder. Uh, and then after doing that, it was just like, kind of just needed a break for a little while where we pulled back a lot and uh we trained differently with the frequency the volume the intensity we backed everything down a lot um and, until it was a little bit more ready to get into things and then having states and rising tides has kind of forced that need to do that uh, but it's still a little bit easier to do that than it is to do it with uh like we're if we're throwing the equipped in and we like and now everything is just at, at level ten all the time, um, so I think that's a big difference. Um, we're on a, like going back into raw training. I want to explain that it wasn't. I didn't feel horrible. That was the thing that was so strange to me. My body physically felt fine. It was like my internal like I couldn't function. It was like my whole central nervous system was just not agreeing with me and I couldn't figure it out. Like it, it was really interesting for that reason because your body didn't feel as bad because you weren't lifting that weight off, but it, it, it messed with like different things. Like it definitely, I was definitely more mentally tired than physically. Like I couldn't bring myself to train super heavy for the two weeks after it was, it was interesting. Um, I kept telling myself like I feel fine, but every time I went to get under a bar, it just felt like it was a thousand pounds. Yeah, it was more different kind of fatigue. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out time wise. I'm looking at looking at both. Um, I think I I mean I think that's probably good tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, as I think we should come to come back um, and do this again in. Six months when rising tide is over, so we can kind of talk about like, you know, we can say like, what was the difference? You know, how we talk about getting ready for the two meets back to back was last year, uh, and how the two meets getting back to back again this year, but removing the equipment and how things have changed a little bit. Um, I don't know, do you two have any other questions for? Mm -hmm. like, right Thanks. Now? Thanks, Leah, for coming on. All I gotta say is that you know we got amazing trainers at Gleason Performance Training. <laughs> Gleason's performance training, achieve your dreams. Leah, do you have social media that you would like people to follow you at? Any shout outs? You got your time right now. Okay. Uh, my 
panel for Lisa Reporters Training is Leah GPT, and then my actual personal powerlifting page is Leah underscore powerlifting. L I A. <laughs> and as always, Gleason Performance Training Achieve Your Dreams.